Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Pleased to have here today the last week of the regular season. We've got a big time WCS game. It's a big time Region 7 6A contest between Independence and Ravenwood. Coach Scott Stidham, Independence. Coach Will Hester, Ravenwood. Appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, Thanks man. Thanks for having us. Uh, Coach Stidham, now you're kind of old hat at this now. This is like <laughs> two weeks in a row. Is it three uh, weeks in a row? <laughs> two weeks. Well, yeah, it might have been three. We're counting fall <laughs> break. We're not yeah. going to count that week. So three. That's true. So this is no big deal now. <laughs> That's right. Appreciate you showing me how to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're doing okay. Uh, Coach Hester, to talk about what a big game this is tonight, you guys have had maybe a few more media obligations than even a typical week. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's drawn to the story of us being in a four-way tie at the top of the league and uh, all the things that come along with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's always good for be able to talk about our kids and have the opportunity for them to play in big games. And you know, to me, that's one of the best things about being a Williamson County athlete is each and every week uh, you're going to play in a game that means something. Uh, unfortunately, every of our, all of our non-region games have been big games <laughs> as well. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, why would you not want to play against the best? And, and this county allows you to do that. Well, and I would argue, and I'm not just saying this because you two are here, if you look at overall schedule, obviously we're all playing each other in 6A, I think you've had the best two schedules in WCS too. Would you guys agree with that? Uh, they, they have for sure, yeah. And uh, four of our five non-regional were, were really good also. So it's been a challenge, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, all of the teams that we played are going to be playoff teams in, uh, as far as the non-region goes. And then, so that means only two of the teams that we played in the region won't. So eight of our 10 will be playing next week. So that's, that's pretty impressive, I think. Well, talk about this. And you guys are great about this. I think it's because you're veteran coaches. You get it. You're three and one in the region. That's the record. But what's the difference? Is it mentally different? Do you have to approach it different with your kids? What if you were eight and two and three and one? Versus five and four and three and one. Is it is it any different? Is that something you have to mention? Is it the same? I don't I don't think our kids care. You know <laughs> what what matters is we got to play uh, to keep going. You know we're in because we, we've won three games and for fortune whoever wins between us gets to play at home. So it doesn't matter what you did non region and sometimes it goes to overall record. But we're fortunate that we're all four tied and it's just uh, who wins Friday. Yeah, the three-way tiebreaker would get you. You know, obviously, if there was a, a overall record, you know, component, which there is in the three-way tie, but when you've all beaten each other. But, I mean, in the end, I think, you know, some of the losses that both of us have had are going to prepare us well for this week and the weeks to come. And, uh, you know, you got to know who your team is when the playoffs roll around. And I think we both have a good idea of who we are and what we have to do to be successful. Well, let me ask you both this, not to harp on this, but uh, – would you rather be, let's just use a number, six and four playing that tough non-region that makes you better in the playoffs, or would you rather be eight and two with the same seeding, but maybe you haven't played as tough a competition? What are your thoughts about that, Coach Hester? Well, you know, I'm going to lay it to you like this. I don't care about the record portion. I care about the number of weeks that I play. And the goal for us is to always play 15 times. And, you know, if it takes some more losses in there to create the team that can play more weeks, you know, then that's what it's all about. You know, I want to be in the final eight, in the final four, in yeah. the final two. I, I don't really care about, you know, I think maybe if you're a young coach or, you know, you feel like, ah, oh, I got, you know, I'm trying to keep my job and all that. You know, I think Coach Tim and I are both in positions in our career that we, it's less about what my overall record is. And it's more about taking each team that we have as far as we can take them. And for these seniors, it's for them to get as many games as they can possibly get. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the message next week is going to be, hey, we got 48 minutes, guys, to earn 48 more. Well, you know, for those seniors, it's maybe the chance to play one more game before they hang it up forever. So, you know, to me, that's what the the mission is, is to try to play as many weeks as possible. And whatever those numbers are, I mean, I, I guarantee you this, if either one of us makes the state championship game and we're, you know, seven and six or whatever, or <laughs> eight and six when the time comes, I guarantee you no one will care. That's right. That's right. Agreed, Coach Tedham. Oh, absolutely. And playing good teams uh, gives you a chance. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, whoever we play next week, I'm sure is going to be pretty good. And, uh, but I don't know that they've played week in and week out who we have. Yeah. 
And so it prepares you for next week and, and what's coming, and it gives you a chance to play in November and, and keep going as long as you can, just like Coach said. Well, and Coach Hester, when you came back, I know we had talked about this. Uh, the year before you got back, Ravenwood gets beat by IMG Academy on ESPN by 31. It actually brought notoriety to the program. You saw people moving in. I think they moved there because of that. Well, I, mean, I don't know that they moved there because of that, but when they moved there, that name was at least on their mind or right. in play or whatever. You know, I, mean, I don't know that anybody picked uh, going to one of the most expensive real estate areas in Tennessee <laughs> just because they watched a high school football game. Uh, but if they were already wanting to live in that area, I think it helps you get people uh, in the building, and it helps your kids. You know, Miles Pollard is playing defensive back at Michigan because, in large part, to a hit on that in that game right. on TV. I think everyone would admit that. That was his coming out party. So, uh, you know, playing big games like that gives you those opportunities to kind of uh, make a splash, if you will. Well, I love it that you guys have that attitude about it, and I think it just makes it better for everyone, honestly, in terms of the experience. Uh, Coach Stedham, talk about this. Has to be exciting to play a game this late where you still have an opportunity to win the league. Oh, yeah. You know, when we lose to – Brentwood in overtime a few weeks ago. We, to be honest, we didn't tell, tell the kids. Figured no doubt we we're going to have to go on the road, and uh, so things fell into place. And now we got a shot to play. And uh, you know, Independence has a great tradition. Has never hosted a six A football playoff game, and so uh, they've been in five A but never done it. So it's something. That, and granted, we know what we have to do in order to do it, and it's a huge challenge. But it's some our kids. Uh, and kind of 25 seniors kind of leave a legacy if we're fortunate enough to do it. Coach Hester, obviously you've been in this league a little bit longer as a head coach and assistant coach. Uh, in my seven years here, I've seen some parity in the league, but not like this. When you're talking four teams, you mentioned Brentwood, Centennial, Indy, Ravenwood, all three and one, all with the chance to win the league, all with the chance to finish second, third, or fourth in the final week of the season. I can't imagine it's ever been that close. No, I mean, I don't think it has. You know, my thing is, especially for the two of us sitting here, you know, our teams don't look like they we thought they would come this time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that has helped create some of the parity. You know, if you take some players out of the league last year, been a lot of parity in the league at right. that point, too. So, you know, it's all about how it shakes out. I do think that uh, – you know, on any given night, any of us can beat the other one. I do think Memphis is a lot that way if you kind of look to the future and, and who we're matching up when, in the playoffs. So I think we're very similar with the people that we're going to have to be playing in the playoffs. So, But, yeah, I mean, a ball bounce here or there, and, you know, you're definitely – the difference between one and four. Well, and Coach uh, Stidham, I think it says a lot about both of your programs that uh, you play several games without an Alabama – <laughs> commitment in Ty Lockwood. Coach plays several games without an SEC committed quarterback, and yet you're still in this spot. And what I say, I don't even think it's close. You can't argue it. When you're talking 6A, when you're talking quality of team top to bottom, this is the best league in Tennessee. Well, no doubt. I mean, we were fortunate. We're behind 21-3 to Summit, you know, who's not even going to make the playoffs. So we had to score late to, to finish Franklin. So, uh, yeah, the, the challenge week in and week out, everybody's well coached. Everybody plays really hard. I understand there's a lot of similarities. And uh, you got to, we're very fortunate to be in a spot to play for an important game tonight. Let, let's talk a little game history. Uh, Ravenwood with the 20 to 10 win last year at Ravenwood. Weather was horrible tonight. It's going to be great. Uh, overall series, Ravenwood leads 13 3. Ravenwood, uh, 1 and 0, only met one time in the playoffs. Uh, Ravenwood has won the last nine. Coach Hester, 3-0 and in this game. Coach Stidham, first time as a coach in this particular matchup. Coach Hester, we talked about this a little bit before we came on the air. I was a little surprised, and I guess it's because it, I really just paid attention to the seven years I've been here. Uh, Indy was in 5A. You guys were 6A. But I didn't realize, and going back and looking at the history, how many times you've been district and region opponents. District, of course, going back to the old Z-plan days. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and it's always seems like it's been the end of the year for whatever reason. It's always been, you know, I know that, uh, you know, the Dash to Sports guy always says, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's the end of the season when Ravenwood and Independence play. Well, I mean, it, it has been. It seems like that. And it's always got playoff implications, always means a lot. You know, I remember last year's game, uh, there were some de determining factors on who was going to be on the road and who was going to be at home uh, based off that game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a meaningful game, but I mean, all of our games are. You know, the margin for error in our league is very slim. And, and But I think the we know all the coaches is kind of a fraternity of coaches of sorts. I think we all get along pretty well, and we all respect each other. So it's, it's, it's fun to play those kinds of games. Now, it's tough to play against your buddy that you've spilt, spent time building a relationship with, but in the end, you know their kids are going to act right. You know the game's going to go a certain way, and that's what high school football is all about. You know, uh, both teams are going to you know play at a high level, and both are going to play with a great sportsmanship and that's what you expect. Coach Stidham, I uh, just wonder, because you've been some different places, but Coach Hester said this. I've noticed uh, with our football coaches, that's true what Coach said. There's this getting along. Yeah. There's this trying to beat each other, but there's helping each other out if you can. Uh, when you guys come to these shows, you're off to the side talking, and I'm having to get you guys over here to get this thing yeah. started. It's not like that everywhere. Oh, not even close. Um, you know, the last reason I was win, uh, we wanted to win in the playoffs, I wanted everybody else to lose. <laughs> and that's not the case here. Uh, that's just the fact. Well, the reason but, he's saying that is he knows he can beat all of us. No, so he wants us to win. Whatever. No. But, you know, I was welcomed from, from day one. You know, had a relationship with Coach before and some of the coaches uh, in this region. So, yeah, we, we pull for each other and we support each other, and uh, it's it's not like that everywhere else. It's Coach, a special place. And there's a little known fact now. <laughs> Coach kind of glossed over that we knew each other before. I was going to say The this. largest butt kicking I've ever taken is to this man right here. So don't think I <laughs> haven't forgot that. And, you know, one of these days, the shoe may be on the other foot. The, the first varsity <laughs> game ever. At Nolensville High yeah. School, right? It was the only. Yeah, Dr. Looney parachutes in. I yeah. mean, it was it was a sight to be behold, and this man puts up about 60 on us. <laughs> well, first of all. There's an old game day t-shirt out there, by the way, somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. I guarantee it is. There, there was a great atmosphere, but Coach remembers his biggest butt with him. I've had so many big butt with him, I don't even remember where they are or who it's from. So. <laughs> so, Coach, uh, Hester, educate our, our folks here. So, you were at Nolensville. Y'all decided to play one game that year. You yeah, we – Between I mean, the rest, JV, so right? So, JCM closes. JCM so JCM closes their doors. That was they were on Scott's schedule, and I think maybe the Tita West of Lay even contacted us about say, "Hey, I, we know that South Gibson's looking for a game. We know y'all don't have a game, uh, or Scott may have. I, there was I don't know how yeah. it actually came about, but uh, it was cool that our kids got to experience that. Right. So we just had freshmen and sophomores in the building. We had been playing on Monday nights, and the chance to play a Friday night game at our place. Uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. The atmosphere was great. The whole community was there. Uh, you know, if the school board lights would have gone out, that would have been fine too. But in the end, it was it was a good night. Well, so it's funny when you go back and look at the schedules. You look at Coach T. I know a lot of people go back and look at scores. No one's all had one game that year, one official game. Yeah. Yep. Which was kind of cool. And that was the first year the school was. That was school. the first year the school opened. Uh, it was the first varsity game ever played on on the first turf field in Williamson County Schools. Uh, so, I mean, there was a lot of firsts uh, there. He can't use this as bulletin board material tonight because the people <laughs> at Ravenwood don't care about knowing. No, well. they, don't care. they don't care. I do, by God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about last week's games. We're going to start with Ravenwood. Just a shootout, I think, Coach, uh, at the half. You led, but you only had 13 points. And then that second half, it's just back and forth. Uh, you rotated Connor Swan, who's a senior at quarterback with what's going to be an all-time great Wilco name, Maverick Chance, a freshman. Uh, I thought that was pretty neat that Maverick gets in there. He throws a touchdown late to Sam Wolf. You don't get the onside kick, but for a freshman to come out and play in that game against that quality opponent, you have to be pleased with how he played. Absolutely, and I'm going to take it one step further when it comes to the names. So we had two freshman quarterbacks this year, Maverick Chance and Lucas Goose. So we had Maverick and Goose were our quarterbacks on the freshman. You that up. 100% no, G-U-S-E, baby. And, uh, but no, they both played well. Uh, I thought they managed the game well. They distributed the ball. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. When, when we're playing a game without 
the quarterback we thought we were going to play with at the start of the season, you wonder how many points you're going to be able to score. And, you know, JP2's only losses are to Baylor and NBA, who are pretty darn good football teams. Uh, and, you know, for us to score 36 points, I don't know that I would have predicted that going right. into the game. Uh, but, you know, I think – the rest of the players on the offensive side of the ball have taken it out of a challenge to step up their play. You know, clearly Chris made a lot of things happen on his own and and made you know righted some wrongs when he's in the game. But uh, you know, but since he's been out, those guys have kind of you know stepped up and improved themselves. And when he gets back, I think it'll help us that much more. You know, when that is, you know, I don't know, but uh, I think there's an opportunity there for us to be something special when that time comes. D- don't around. you think? I mean, obviously, you want Parson, you want him to be the guy. But when you've got Swan, you've got Maverick, who's a little different, and then you've got Chapman, who you put back there in a in a strange kind of way. It sort of makes you tougher to prepare for. Yeah, I mean, maybe you know, I don't know. I, I'm not preparing for us, so I don't have any idea. That would be a question for Coach Stidham. But uh, you know, it's going to make at least there'll be some question on which direction we were going to go and things of that nature, and, and how we're going to try to move the ball. Uh, But in the end, it comes down to blocking and tackling. The team that runs the ball the best tonight is going to have the best chance to be successful. You know, they've got an outstanding running back in Trey Hartwell that, you know, you're not going to stop him. You hope to contain him enough that it's not a career night for him and and he breaks your back. Uh, But, you know, we're going to have to play well and rush defense and run the ball well. And I think Coach is probably going to say something very similar for them. I mean, you know, this time of year – Football is one running it and playing great defense. And uh, you, you can't count on the weather this time of year. And, you know, there's very few teams that are four and five wide and throw it every down that win state championships. You just don't see it much. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be an uh, 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 onus put on running and stopping the run. Well, Coach, your team, obviously you've had some similarities. Changing quarterbacks. Sapone's had several games now really playing well for you. Uh, last week – uh, you go to Page, you win 13 nothing. I don't know if you could have even predicted that your defense would hold that offense scoreless. There's a couple times they had it deep, uh, but your defense had a sort of bend, don't break sort of mentality that night. Uh, you have to be very pleased with how your defense played because Page is an explosive offense. They are. They are for sure. And, they, and they've had some injuries too, just like everybody this time of year when you played the schedule, all ones have. So uh, give – Page did a lot. They were able to run the ball in the second half. It seemed like the first half we had the ball the whole half because we were able to move it. The second half seemed like they did. So we had to get some big red red zone stops. But uh, kids are playing well and, and figuring out what we're doing. And uh, their their effort is something we're really proud of. It's been there from get-go. But now they're starting to understand uh, what we need them to do in their fits. Now, the challenge is going to be a lot more tonight with what we have to fit against. Is it safe to say, and I think this happens, I saw it even with Coach Hester his first year back, even though he had been at Ravenwood, when you're new to the team and they're new to you, I've always said the guys who are first-year coaches or second-year coaches in a program, you're not you're going to get to your ceiling maybe a little later just because of that, you don't have that familiarity with one another. I would think, looking at that game, again, this is my thoughts, you tell me if I'm wrong, that may be your most complete game. Yeah, probably. We didn't finish drives like we probably should have offensively. But overall, I would agree with that. We got a big turnover on a kickoff that we've been working on. And uh, they're, you know, our coaches are new. So it's a, some are still came from the uh, previous staff and some are brought in new. So it's taken us a little while to gel and get together and with the injuries. But uh, the tribute goes to our 25 seniors. Because when you're a senior and you got a new coach that – comes in it's hard because you're used to what it what was there before and uh says a lot about the kind of kids we have that they've bought into what we're trying to do and keep getting better let's talk again a little region outlook uh franklin and summit they play one another both zero and four everyone else is three and one like we talked about earlier every team can literally finish one two three or four you do know this you win you're at home you lose you're on the road uh and again doesn't mean it's over everybody knows they're in for the playoffs uh, Coach Hester, let's talk about your team a little bit offensively. With the change in quarterback, Carter Pace has obviously been big for you, but especially with Parson uh, being out, you've really relied on Carter, and he's played great for you. Yeah, I mean, Carter is a dynamic back and probably had to take a back seat to Chris at times, you know, when Chris was playing. I mean, you know, he's going to go over 1,000 yards this this week, you know, unless something catastrophic happens. I think he's 20 yards away or, or something like that. And, uh, you know, and that's – 
you know, some games only getting 10 or 11 touches early in the year. So, you know, now he we probably doubled his, his you know, opportunities, I guess. And uh, he just runs so violently. Uh, he's, you know, uh, he may be short in stature, but, you know, he's a ball of muscle and, uh, you know, just a junior. So thank goodness we got him for another year. But uh, he's had he's done very well, and Cartua has as well. You know, they are kind of a, a one-two punch back there. And then at times when they're back there together, uh, you know, it's kind of a little two-headed monster that we, that we like to see. But none of that can happen without the offensive line. I think they've improved throughout the year. I think they now know that, hey, uh, you know, it's on us. You know, we got to do better. They're not going to get any of the credit. You know, we're talking about Carter Pace, and we talked about, you know, a lot about Chris, but they're the ones, if they don't play well, none of all this stuff works. None of this stuff goes together. And, uh, you know, Indy does a great job of all their movements up front, and we got to be smart and make sure that we don't, you know, have our heads spinning when the time comes to make a big block. Coach Stidham, uh, Daniel Morales, he's a young man, made some big plays last week for you. And especially with Lockwood being out, he's really, really stepped up for you too. Yeah, he has. He had, I think, 150 yards receiving a couple weeks ago against Summit. And then uh, early in the third quarter, Page is driving. He got an interception. So he plays a lot on both sides of the ball. Special player. He got injured early last year, so he didn't get to play very much as a junior. But he's had a great senior year. And uh, he's got a chance. He'll play college football somewhere because uh, just the kind of player he is. He loves playing the game of football. Well, and you may not know this, Coach, but I found out that his dad, Orlando, is a big fan of the show. Kind All of right. Like, kind of like Mama Hester. <laughs> kind of like Mama. <laughs> huh? So we want to give him a shout-out. I know he's watching this week. Uh, uh, you know, you're a big stat guy, right? Uh, here's big, what I, big stat Here's guy. what I need you to do. I need you to go back and find out how long it's been since there wasn't a Katina on the independent Yes, roster. we do. Because, need to, yeah, I need to find that because out. Because, I mean – I'm maybe since the school opened every every season. I don't have any idea, but I'm about tired of playing against a, a <laughs> and we've had some And now we've got a freshman. I know oh, yeah. there's a freshman. I mean, and they, yeah, there's been some at Centennial. Centennial. I know the brothers and, right. you know, love listening to their music, by the way. Shout out to the kids. <laughs> but, golly, they need to stop Adopt having kids. kids. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. Or they need to move, right? Yeah, whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's great. Let's talk a little defense, Coach Hester. Now, I know your opponents had something to do with this, and you, I'm sure you know this, but your defense and your wins, you've given up seven points a game, and the loss is 39. Obviously, it has something to do with the opponent, but uh, your defense in those wins have obviously played a little bit better than they have in the losses. But, again, the opponents have a lot to do with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would bear to say the obvious statement in there is yes. if they don't score, they can't win, <laughs> right? But – uh, it is tough to play defense in the way football is made now, right? You know, we're very proud of how we've played defense. I think our best defense has kind of been played in the league. You know, a lot of our uh, massive output games out of opponents have been our non-league games. I mean, I think we gave up 40 to Oakland and 40 to – to uh, NBA, and it was almost 40 last week. You know, there's 120 points in that three non-region ball games there. So, you know, we've done a pretty good job, I guess, of playing the teams we're more familiar with. Uh, obviously, we're not familiar with Coach Stidham. This is our first time or <laughs> second time for me <laughs> in playing against him. And he was an option guy back then. So it, unless he put in the option in two days this week, uh, you know, I feel at least we're not going to see that. So, uh, but yeah, I'm proud of our guys. They played good defense. But it comes down to being in the right place. You know, we've made some boneheaded mistakes and given up big plays. And it's really the big play that's hurt us. You know, we've got to make them snap it again. If we can make them snap it again, uh, we'll have a chance. Well, and to be fair to your team, I could have said in those games, your offense has scored a lot more too, <laughs> right? In, right? In those games, you're giving up yeah. 39, you're scoring more too. Yeah, the, te <laughs> the team that wins is going to score more and give up less. I mean, that is his – as Captain Obvious as it gets right there. Well, listen, i got to educate people here. Coach My mom knows that. I bet Mr. Morales knows that. So we can move on. Coach Stidham, listen, you had some concerns with the big plays against Summit. You said, hey, we played pretty well, but we gave up these big chunk plays. Obviously, something you talked about before the Page game, and you corrected. Page going into that game, averaging 33 a game, and had been pretty consistent doing that against a lot of different opponents. So... To shut them out is a great showing by your defense. Yeah, again, we, we played pretty well. We were able to keep it away from them in the first half, and we're able to run the ball. 
You know, it's the same story. Coach and I are like, we could talk probably in each other's locker rooms because we're saying the same thing. You got to run the ball and stop the run and uh, not giving up big plays. It, it's, it's hard to snap the ball and drive in high school football 80 yards just getting four and five and six yards of play. It's because chances are you're going to mess up yourself without the defense. Right. And so uh, we were able to, to prevent big plays and made them punt some and kept, kept it away from them. And that was our, you know, that's everybody's philosophy. Keep everything in front of you and make them snap it again. And we were able to do that. I thought our kids played uh, really well Friday night. Coach Hester, uh, we talk about this all the time with special teams. These games, seems like the special teams, where something happens uh, special teams-wise in these games, especially if they're, they're close games. Pretty happy with that unit at this point in the season. I know it gets better because you can't really practice it in the preseason. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not practicing the tackle. I mean, you're practicing to the point of contact in a lot of those drills. You know, we had a special teams miscue last week on a punt. We missed a A-gap run-through guy and had a guy make a business decision on the block that hopefully we got corrected this week. And uh, But then we made some big plays, uh, three for three on field goals last week. You know, had an onside kick that they called us offsides on that, you know, if you watch the film, we weren't offsides <laughs> on. But, you know, they're human beings, too. Sure. And, uh, we had a fake punt that kept us in the centennial game. And uh, so we've done some things on special teams that have, that have kept us around. And, you know, they had a big play on special teams last week. So we can't be the victim of their big special teams right. play. So uh, you just got to take care of what you can take care of or control the controllables and, uh, and not allow special teams to lose you the game. You know, it's tough for them to win the game for you. Maybe a block kick or something, you can win the game on special teams, but they can sure cause you to, to lose the game for sure. Let me ask you this, Coach Stidham, because he mentioned the uh, – Coach Hester mentioned the, the fake punt. I can remember back when Roger Holmes was the coach at Beach. We're talking years ago, Wayne T. guy. Mm -hmm. He used to tell me, because of the way you guys traded films, it's different now, I guess, with Huddle. He'd say you'd want to run something – to make the other team have to prepare. He was like, in the last two games or four games or however many game films you were swapping out, you put a little wrinkle in just so the other team has to get ready for it. Does that still exist with the way Huddle is now and you can watch every game? Probably not quite as much. But, you know, you're going to get film. I mean, we'll trade, and we both said we'll trade whatever you want because we don't have secrets from each other. But I do think you do – I mean, it's like Coach – you know, we've basically seen two different offenses on the field, you know? I mean, <laughs> who's going to play quarterback for them and what are they going to do? So it is hard to prepare. And so they have put some things out there and same thing, special teams, like Coach talked about a fake punt, you know, from his own nine-yard line or something. So How uh, mummy-esque. Yeah, very much Coach so. Coach Hester. But it worked. It was a <laughs> great call. I prefer call. not that <laughs> comparison, but hey, whatever. Well, I'm a Kentucky you know. fan, so i got to get mummy in there. <laughs> I get it. And you got to remember when Coach Holmes was talking about that, too, you literally had to hand a VHS tape right. to the opponent, some of which, you know, I remember the old days had other things on there that weren't football related. <laughs> so... Uh, Huddle's definitely changed everything, and everybody's kind of an open book. You know, the D2 League has a database that they put all their film on, and you can watch anything from yeah. wide shot to end zone shot. You know, I kind of wish we would do that. I mean, in the end, if you want to film on somebody bad enough, you're going to get it. And, you know, I guess the concern to me is if you act like you've got this masterful secret that you don't want out there, you know, they're going to find out anyway. My opinion is, you know, if you're coaching your kids right and they're you're understanding where they fit and, and all their schematics, you know, in the end, everybody's about the same. It, it all boils down to who makes less mistakes and who wants it more. And all those plays, man, they're just, just plays. And most of us are running the exact same ones anyway. Well, it's execution, right, Coach Stedham? I mean, I can know what you're going to do, but – Who's going to execute it? Oh, there's no doubt. You know, I, I watched uh, last year's uh, Ravenwood Indy game earlier this week, and uh, they ran every play the second half. You knew it was coming where it was coming, and we couldn't stop them. And so, you know, you got to get off blocks, and you got to block and tackle. And no one's ever, again, I, I tell our kids a lot, no one's ever lost a game and said we were just way too physical. You know, it's never <laughs> happened in the history of football. So uh, they're really big and they're well coached, and we got to be able to match their physicality tonight. Well, we're getting a little short on time. Uh, give me a key tonight. It could be offense or defense, Coach Hester, but something that's on your mind, we have to make sure we do X. 
I mean, I, I think we've covered it. You know, I mean, it, you've heard enough coach speak here. In the, in the end, it's going to be we got to score one more point than they do. You know what I mean? And uh, it's going to come down to running the football and stopping the run and, you know, blocking and tackling. I mean, that, it, it, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's as real as it can get. Sure. Coach Stedham? Uh, and turnovers are huge, you know, in a, in a big game like this because you steal an extra possession, uh, it'll be huge. So we got to take care of the ball and hopefully – steal one somehow during during tonight's game. We appreciate you guys being here. We're looking forward to tonight's game. Again, Ravenwood traveling to Independence, playing for a home playoff game. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.